more fun games than movies. This is Trailer Told, a YouTube channel in the world. Thank you for clicking. Subscriptions are a huge boost. Based on community feedback, loot is being totally reworked. We're significantly reducing affix bloat on items, adding two all new end game crafting systems and a new end game dungeon to conquer and more all in this video. Marcus and I are gonna walk you through all of these new itemization changes. But first, I wanna welcome Charles Dunn, who's a game designer on the team. Welcome, Charles. Thanks for having me, really excited to be here. As Charles already knows, normally we think of questions players might have for our developers, but this time we went ahead and asked on social media. So if you responded to the post, you might be featured in today's video. So, how's loot changing exactly? Well, for starters, when an item drops, it will only have core and basic stats at first, like strength and attack speed things we can actually use for most builds right away. We're removing all the overly specific conditional modifiers, so no more damage to injured enemies, for example. You should mostly see affixes that will impact your build positively and with higher uptime. Now, this doesn't mean we're cutting out the complexity, we're just spreading it out across different systems. Once you fully craft up your gear in the end game, ancestral legendary items will have even more stats than they did before with five, which means more build possibilities. But going forward, they will start out with a lower amount. I usually explain it like this. We've removed conditional stats from item drops since they were way too specific, and then created a tempering system to add on cooler things that will make sense for your build. For example, skeletal mage damage or an increase to the size of corpse explosion are things I would want more than damage to injured. The next change I want to mention is what we call greater affixes. When an ancestral or unique item drops, there's a chance for it to roll with a greater affix. A greater affix is one and a half times stronger than a normal one. And they're acquired two ways. One, from our obol vendors, which helps reinvigorate this currency. And secondly, from an item simply dropping on the ground. Players will have an audio and visual cue when this occurs. Legendaries can potentially have three graders and unique items can have four. But getting a maxed out greater affix item is gonna be really rare. These items will hold tremendous value, not just because of the increased stats, which is really nice, but also because you can trade Yes, trade them to other players. So long as you don't craft or change them in any way, you can trade legendaries and non-Uber uniques to other players. Marcus is now gonna walk you through our new system called Tempering. Thanks, Ruben. So Tempering is a way to add meaningful and most of all, fun affixes to your legendary items. There are lots of different ways to augment your spells with Tempering, but as an example, here's Corpse Explosion before. Not too bad. And here's Corpse Explosion after you temper the size of the spell. So to accomplish this, you're going to need a tempering manual. These can be acquired from most of the in-game content, so you should see them dropping normally through gameplay. A tempering manual is like a crafting book, with a small collection of different recipes. Let's use Corpse Explosion as an example. Once I find the Profane Innovation Manual, I can begin adding the affixes from the Profane Innovation list and put them onto my items. Head over to the blacksmith, plug in the desired piece of gear that matches your recipe. As you can see here at the top, Profane Innovation is in the utility category, so it can be applied to your armor. Each tempering manual affects only a small handful of spells, so getting the stat or affix you need is much easier than it used to be. The manuals you find will last until the end of the season you're in, so craft away. Eternal Realm manuals last forever. The only caveat is tempering durability. You can only temper until you're out of charges, but hey, that's the price of admission for powerful items. Remember, you can always find or trade for more. To bring all this together, let's do a quick recap. In World Tier 4, ideally, you'll be on the lookout for items with greater affixes. Then take those items and fully temper them up. Once complete, you can now start the masterworking process. Masterworking is a late game crafting system, allowing you to upgrade your items at the blacksmith after you fully temper them. It will require pit materials, which we're gonna cover next. Each piece of gear will have 12 masterworking ranks to achieve. As you progress to rank 12, you will see all of your affixes on that item increase in power, which is really nice. But every fourth tier, so 4, 8, 12, you will see a massive increase to a single stat. The interface does a nice job at reminding you what you're getting next. The first time you hit that big fourth tier upgrade, it will always be blue. So you could have three blues for three different stats. But if you manage to hit the same stat multiple times, the color will change. It'll go from blue as the base to yellow, then orange, only of course if you hit the same stat over and over. 
And if you reach the end, rank 12, and you're not happy with those big fourth tier rolls you got, maybe you wanted vulnerable damage or corpse explosion damage, well, you can reset the item completely and start the master working process all over again. All right, Marcus, you're up. So the pit. To access the pit, you'll need two things. A rune shard, which drops from endgame activities like Helltide chests and Whisper bounties. And you'll also need to complete a Nightmare Dungeon, Tier 45. Once finished, a priority quest will pop up, sending you to Karagar, unlocking this activity. The pit is built to test you. The higher levels can be absolutely brutal. As they get more and more challenging with every tier, you can also expect death penalties and a 15 minute timer constantly ticking lower and lower. We also have randomized layouts and monster families to help keep the replayability fresh. Filling up your progress bar spawns an in-game boss, but beware, at various intervals, other bosses will show up, launching a random attack at you. Always be on the lookout for a potential ambush. Run this solo or in groups, but the player who opens the pit receives the lion's share of the treasure, including tormented boss summoning materials, which we'll get to in the next video. Also, a fast completion of the pit means more rewards overall, and the ability to skip tiers and climb even faster. We're excited for all of you to get your hands on this content. So let's go ahead and jump into some Q&A with our very patient Charles Dunn. All right, Charles, remember, these questions are from social media, so I don't want to be held accountable for anything. <laughs> Enrique wants to know, since unique items cannot receive tempered affixes, are you thinking of upgrading the base stats of uniques? Many unique items already have affixes that are more powerful than your normal affixes. And of course, the unique power itself is going to be very impactful for your build. However, if they're still not competitive with items with tempered affixes, then we'll definitely make adjustments moving forward to ensure that they are still appealing. Kodith asks, are there any plans to increase the tempering durability chances or possibly a way to reset them like masterworking? Not right at the start of the season. However, it is definitely an avenue that we're going to explore in the future. I noticed a few people like Zach Bailey and Foz ask, can we make lower rarity items more valuable? The lower rarity items, like normal, magic, and rare items, serve a variety of purposes in Diablo 4. The first is that they give a sense of progression as you're leveling up your character. You're getting more affixes, more power, and more complexity as you move through the tiers of items. Of course, capping out at legendary and unique items with the most affixes possible. Now, for veterans of Diablo 4, They've already experienced a lot of this progression and they may not really notice or feel the impact as they're leveling up and getting these lower quality items. However, for players who are new to Diablo 4 or playing through for the first time, that type of progression is very important to making a satisfying experience. The other function that they serve is kind of to signpost which items you should be caring about at which stage of your journey. So in the early game, you're going to be trying to find magic items that are upgrades, and eventually you'll graduate to rarer items, and then, of course, legendaries and uniques in the late game. Once you really are trying to max out your build, you're going to be just looking for those greater affixes on the ancestral legendaries and unique items, and this allows you to really focus in on which items you should be caring about at which stage of the game. We've definitely heard the sentiment that some players would like the normal magic and rare items to be more impactful in the late game, and that's something we're considering moving forward, but we have no firm plans on that at the moment. And we think for the current state of Diablo 4, it's much better that it's very clear what types of items you should be caring about at which point in your journey. Nice. So William's asking, is a loot filter still on the table? We've heard calls for loot filter in Diablo 4 for a while now, and a lot of that came from having to sort through many items with conditional affixes, and there's just a lot of item bloat to sort through. We think a lot of the changes we're making in this season will alleviate many of those concerns. However, if those concerns persist and players are still finding a need for a loot filter going forward, it's something we're willing to consider. The Brown Bull would like greater affixes to be much more visible. Since we first revealed greater affixes in the PTR, we've made a number of improvements to make them more visible, more obvious, and much more exciting when they drop. Nice. So a question for the casual players. So the pit is an end game system and it's really meant for the, you know, the highest tier of player. If I'm a more casual Diablo 4 player, should I expect to be engaging with the pit or get anything, getting anything out of it? The pit is a system that is designed for all end game players. As soon as you reach level 100, you should be able to start getting into at least the lower levels of the pit in order to unlock the materials to begin masterworking. However, as you want to push deeper and get those more rare materials and masterwork your gear even further, it's going to be quite challenging and you're going to need to optimize your build to take on those challenges. I just want to say, keep the feedback coming 
hit your comments down below and we'll continue to work with the community to make Diablo 4 even better. See you in Sanctuary.